All right, I found some switches. I think these will work. I think I just re need to remove the, uh, just need to remove this part. <laughs> uh, how do I remove that part? Brute force. <laughs> That's how. Uh, let's see. How do I, how do I get rid of that part like that? There you go. Now I have a little push buttony thing. And the holes line up and the little plunger lines up. And they're all the same, I think. I could have had a big bag of these of different kinds. I don't remember where I bought them, but uh, uh, yeah, that should work great. There we go. Got two of them. Okay, where's my screwdriver? Can you, see, can you see what I'm doing? Zoom out a little bit. Ah, uh, there's a little wire in the back which I can add. This is the wire that's the, when it's normally open, that, that shorts the two together and bypasses this, uh, this particular pie filter. Otherwise, when the switch is pushed, then the pie filter is placed into, uh, into the circuit. Okay. Yeah. And then these are the two legs of the pie that short out to this block here. So I shall put these as new. Who made who made these switches? Are these C and K? Oh, these are official micro switch. Freeport, Illinois. I thought those things were bulletproof, but I guess they break too. Mechanical things break. Electronic things are more reliable. But usually what happens is you get some piece of equipment and it's, uh oh, no, no, the little plunger thing is not lining up because I put it in upside down, didn't I? Yes, I put it in upside down. What a dork. <laughs> All right. I'm not paying attention. I'm talking to you guys. You're probably screaming at the screen. You're putting it in backwards. Yeah, micro switch and uh, C and K, they were the big Big switch companies. All right, I'll flip this one around. Yeah, that looks better. Much better. Thing was hand assembled, you know. It must have must have taken a lot of labor to build things in those days. I guess that's why there were a lot of manufacturing jobs. in there. We'll have to move this little link over and then uh, and then put this resistor back on. So this is the 
the middle of the uh, of the pack. It's got this little heat shrink on it, which I don't know why. I guess safety first. Um, so it goes it goes in here and solders to those two. And this little link goes back here and solders to the other two. So if you look at the way this is constructed, this metal piece actually acts as a, a an RF shield between the different sections of the uh, of the attenuator. So it's quite clever. All right. The, I'm sure these were made probably by hand in the machine shop. Uh, no CNC back then. Nope. Cool. All right. Let me do some soldering. All right. Got the little little short between the two sides. Now. I'll Put on the one that goes between and solder these down at the same time. These solder down and then these. Oh, not as much room. Let's see, how does this done? I think I'm gonna have to bend bend these tabs over. Tabs. There we go. Then this will fit over the top. And that looks good. That right there is zero. Zero. So, we will place zero, zero. Right, zero. Wait, seven, six. Six. 
Success. I fixed it. Very cool. All right, so it's working again. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, let's flip this around so it's on camera. There we go. Put on zero dBm. Okay, one. All right. Now the next should be 0 0.891. 0 0.899, and then 0 0.784. 794.8, then 707, 715, then 631, 652, I mean 562, 501, pretty good, 447, 398, good, 355, 316, 282, and 251. Excellent. I'm sure it's within spec from the ancient days. <laughs> um, yeah, so working again. Like I said, I don't remember where I got it. Um, I do remember getting several. I remember getting like maybe half a dozen of them and selling selling a bunch and keeping the crusty ones, selling the nice ones and selling and keeping the crusty ones. That's all I remember. And that was like uh, eight years ago or something. And it's been on the shelf since then. Um, there used to be a uh, surplus place that would buy excess inventory from companies, like companies going out of business. They were mostly interested in the furniture and stuff like that. But they would pull out the technology and stuff and they would um, put it in a room. And once a week they would have a sealed bid auction. And I uh, used to go there all the time and buy things off a sealed bid. I used to get good deals. I used to buy pallets worth of stuff. But they stopped doing that. And uh, not only did they stop doing that, but they st uh, a bunch of people just figure out uh, that that place existed and they would come in and they would bid way more than the stuff was worth I'm sure they never got their money out of it um, Kind of like those uh, storage wars you see on TV uh, They they were just bidding way too much money for what it was like this thing uh, You know how, how much would you know how much your, how much is it worth now that I've fixed it, right? And how much would it have cost if you gave it to me and said here fix it, right? And I'm sure my labor is way way too expensive um, but for a home project, it's great. I love buying broken stuff and fixing it.